Hello and welcome back to the series of videos on Big Data and Hadoop. In the previous video, we talked about what is Big Data, its characteristics and the importance of Big Data. In this video, we will talk about why traditional solutions such as relational database management systems cannot solve all Big Data problems. With Big Data being such a buzzword these days, there are a lot of vendors coming up with new solutions, architectures or products that attempt to solve big data problems. You might ask, why new solutions have to be used? Why not use existing solutions such as relational database management systems to solve the supposed big data problems? I'd say that it's a very good question. Well, relational databases have been around for more than 30 years and they have been the core mechanism for structured data storage and retrieval and they have been very dominant at that. The reasons for the dominance of relational databases are that they have continually offered the best mix of simplicity, robustness, flexibility, performance and compatibility in managing generic data. Examples of RDBMS include Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, DB2, Teradata, and so on. So why cannot these RDBMS systems solve big data problems? Before we get into the big question, let us first get a quick background on RDBMS systems. A relational database is essentially a group of tables. Tables are made up of columns and rows. Those tables have constraints on what data can be entered, and also relationships are defined between them. Relational databases are queried using SQL and result sets are produced from queries that access data from one or more tables. Multiple tables being accessed in a single query are joined together, typically by a criterion defined in the table relationship columns. Normalization is a data structuring model used with relational databases that ensures data consistency and removes data duplication. However, to offer all of this, relational databases have to be incredibly complex internally. For example, a relatively simple select statement could have hundreds of potential query execution paths, which the optimizer would evaluate at runtime. All of this is hidden to us as users, but under the cover, RDBMS determines the execution plan that best answers our requests by using things like cost-based algorithms. As you can see, RDBMS does a lot of things. But what are its drawbacks? For all the benefits that RDBMS provides, in today's world of data, for an increasing number of applications, one of the benefits is becoming more and more critical. So much so that for an increasing number of database users, this benefit is beginning to eclipse other benefits in importance. And that benefit is scalability. As more and more applications are launched in environments that have massive workloads, their scalability requirements can, first of all, change very quickly and secondly, grow very large. Supporting large number of concurrent users is important, but because app usage requirements are hard to predict, it's just as important to dynamically support rapidly growing or shrinking numbers of concurrent users. For example, a newly launched application can go viral, growing from zero to a million users overnight, literally. Some users are active frequently while others use an application just a few times and maybe they never return. Seasonal swings like those around Christmas or Valentine's Day can create spikes for short periods. The large number of users combined with the dynamic nature of usage patterns is driving the need for more easily scalable database technology. When the scalability requirements change, it can be difficult to manage if you have a relational database sitting on a single in-house server. 
With relational technologies, many application developers find it difficult or even impossible to get the dynamic scalability and the level of scale they need while also maintaining the performance that users demand. It is not that the relational databases don't scale well. They do, but usually only when that scaling happens on a single server node. When the capacity of that single node is reached, you need to scale out and distribute that load across multiple server nodes using complex techniques such as database sharding. This is when the complexity of relational databases start to rub against their potential to scale. Try scaling to hundreds or thousands of nodes rather than a few and the complexities become overwhelming and the characteristics that make RDBMS so appealing drastically reduce their viability as platforms for large distributed systems. Additionally, we are now in times where cloud services are becoming increasingly significant. For cloud services to be viable, vendors have had to address this limitation of database scaling because a cloud platform without a scalable data store is not much of a platform at all. So to provide customers with a scalable place to store application data, vendors are coming up with alternative solutions such as other database types like NoSQL or data storage and processing frameworks like Hadoop. These solutions focus more on scalability at the expense of other benefits that come with relational databases. And one other important characteristic of RDBMS is that you have to decide upfront the structure of the data that it is going to hold. This means that you will have to know what your data looks like at design time, which might not always be the case. Invariably, there will be a need to change the structure of your data, be it adding a new attribute or increasing the size of an attribute, etc. Making these changes after your application is in production has not only significant costs associated with it, but you will also have to face resistance from your IT team to make those changes. This does not fit the nature of the applications we are dealing with now. There will be changes to data that you would not have thought of beforehand. So your data storage solution, be it a database or something else, needs to be flexible. There will be workloads where flexibility is very valuable and unfortunately RDBMS cannot provide that flexibility. For example, take a product catalog. Initially, let's say you started selling televisions. So you had a schema defined to store the attributes of a television. Later, you expand your business and start selling refrigerators and say music systems. Now, these products have different attributes than a television, right? Now, would it not be tough to create a new table per product type? And lastly, SQL is what is used to retrieve data from database. SQL is a declarative language in that you query your data by stating the result you want and let the database engine figure out how to derive it. This might not always be optimal for your applications. SQL isn't always the natural choice of how to work with information and there are other programming models for interaction with data that can be highly useful at times. We will talk about this in one of our later videos. So as you can see, there are a few strong reasons as to why RDBMS might not be the right fit for all big data related applications. With that, we come to the end of this video. We have talked briefly about relational database management systems and why they will not be able to solve all big data problems. And in the next video, we will talk about an alternative technology, NoSQL database systems that can be used to solve some of the big data problems. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.